Hey guys, before we get started with the tutorial, I just want to come on and say that I am not a mini album expert, that I have watched a lot of YouTube videos, mostly coming from Rosa Kelly Scrapbooking, which designed, I think, the book, and then also from John Ford, who has his methodical approach to cutting and providing some of the measurements that I'm going to give you when making the binding but I wanted to refer you to those YouTube channels and if you have any questions just leave them down in the comment section below and also please go and visit Rosa Kelly scrapbooking and John Ford's YouTube page <music> Hi, I'm back with the mini album series. This is part two. Part one was the supplies. If you haven't seen that part, please go back and watch that video. I'll have it all linked up at the eye above. And now we are going to be cutting chipboard for our pieces. I've already cut one set of chipboards because I needed to make sure I had at least two sets so that I could show you the two different methods of binding. And then off camera, I'm going to go ahead and cut four more sets so that I'll have a total of six. I'm actually going to make, I'm going to cut in sets of six so that it's a lot easier for me for cutting. But I'm only going to show you as I put one book together. But I just want to make sure that I keep all of my pieces in countable order. And so six is my number. Now, I have you, the camera, in my cutting area and it's a little bit difficult to cut that way so I am going to measure backwards from right to left because I need to be able to cut over here on this side so what we want to do is I'm making an 8 by 8 mini ablum and I like to cut it at 8 and 1 8 just so that my cover is a little bit bigger than my book because as you put pages into your book it starts to get really close to the edge and so I just want to make sure that nothing will poke out of the book when I'm done so you may even could use eight and a quarter if you want for this so this is a 12 by 12 piece of chipboard this is just one piece of chipboard and the first way I'm going to show you how to cut it is with this box cutter which is what I usually use because I don't want to warp the blade that's in my caterpillar, but I'll show you that it will cut through as well. So I want to measure back eight and one eighth of an inch. So I will be cutting right here. I think I forgot to tell you in the other video, but I did put it up on the screen that you're also going to need some kind of a ruler. It can be just a regular ruler that you use when you for rotary cutting but I happen to have this ruler here and I will also link it in my Amazon store in the event you are interested in it but you don't have to have this kind of a ruler this ruler actually has this bar that you press down and then it holds your pieces in place so that they don't move so that's why I like that. And then I'm also going to turn this around and cut again eight and one eighth of an inch. So that will be right here. And then I line up on the other end of my mat, lined up right here. Then I press this down to hold it in place and then I use my box cutter. I do like three shallow cuts. That's two. Here's my third one. And then I can mostly flip it up. If it doesn't, then I go through again one more time and see if that pops. Then it kind of pops right off. 
So this is one page. And then this piece here has now been cut to eight and one eighth and I need one inch spines so now I am going to cut three one inch spines from this book I can't get four because the last one would only be seven eighths of an inch and I want three I mean I want one full inch three one full inches so this is a piece of scrap here I'm just trimming off and then I go back one inch to cut my next piece it's still got the feet on the chipboard, so I don't have to worry about it moving. So this is a scrap. Let me get rid of the scrap. And then I'm going to move out one more time. And this time, my feet are not going to be on the chipboard. And so I'm going to have to hold this down while I'm cutting so that it doesn't move as you just saw. So I'm going to hold this and hold the chipboard down so that it doesn't move while I'm cutting because there's nothing under the feet. So if you had a regular ruler you will have to make sure that your ruler does not move. So now I have three spines. So I'm going to just put those into a stack. I'm making a lot of books so I can use the extra spines I'm getting off of the sheets and then once I start making say around in my 15th book maybe I don't have to make any more spine pieces. So I have one more piece of 12 by 12 because I need a second part to go with my book. So this time we are not going to use the box cutter we're actually going to use the cutter pillar. Now the reason why I don't like using this is because it says that it's a self sharpening blade but I don't want to take the risk of my blade getting dull so I don't cut on here regularly but I am going to go ahead and show you this here is about six and a half to six and a quarter that you could cut before you open up the arm so I'm going to open up the arm which is up here and I guess I'll turn it this way so you can see this end better and then I have my cutter right here all the way to the back. This board also has a light that you can cut on right there. And you could also use that as well. Now I'm trying to make sure my arm doesn't hit up on my machine edge and causes it to close. So what I'm going to do is put this on 8 and 1 eighth. And then I'm going to hold this very firm up against the edge here and then I'm just going to take this and go right down it will cut I just don't like it because I think that it's a lot to cut it even advertises it as cutting chipboard but yeah I just prefer not to because I want to make sure that I can use this for years and years and I've already had it maybe three or four years and so now that my blade's down at the bottom, I'm just going to bring it back, making sure that I don't let this part move. I'm putting pressure to hold it. So now I have my two pieces that are cut. Eight and one eighth of an inch. I still have this piece here that I need to cut one inch pieces off of. So I am going to do that now. So now I'm actually lining up so that I can cut my pieces. That's one. Two. And three. And this last one will not be big enough. Let's see which one is the skinniest one which is this one. So I have my three pieces for my book. So we're gonna go ahead and clear this section out and we're going to come back and start binding books. Okay guys, I am back and I have two sheets of the 12 by 12 cardstock that's going to be 
one way that we're going to mat I also have my tape here and I have some glue and I have my scraps here these are just scraps I'm gonna put aside I just wanted to remember to tell you that I do cut my scrap chipboards into pieces and I use them as decorative elements so this is what's wasted but I will be using it somewhere else got my four pieces of chipboard for my base my covers and then also my spines and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two pieces of 12 by 12 and I'm going to cut them down so that I have about an inch around the edge. So I'm just going to cut it into, since my pieces are 8 and 1 8, I'm just going to go ahead and cut this into 10 and 1 8. But you could actually cut this into 10. You don't have to be picky with this because it's just going to cover. So this is a scrap. And you're going to have some more scrap off the other side as well. All right, so we have these two pieces of cardstock that I cut. I have some tape here that I am going to use to tape these two pieces together. Now, I like to put in tape here, press it down. And that's the key also is when you're applying tape, you do want to use your folders to apply pressure because that's what activate the adhesive in the tape and now I'm looking for my scissors just so that I can cut this off sometimes I can tear this but I didn't really want to tear it if you've got a thicker tape you can just use like a one inch piece of tape I'm using like 3 8 inch tape to a quarter of an inch so I'm just going to put down two of these score these and then I'm going to peel this tape up and I'm using my finger when I should be using the tools that I have here and that's what this pointer tool is for so that we can get the tape up easy and then we just want to put these two pieces of paper together straight as possible and then again we are going to activate that adhesive and I like to do it on both sides. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is, for this method of binding, we want to apply our pieces to the paper. But remember, we have this seam here. We don't, we don't want that seam to end up on an edge of our chipboard spine. So what I like to do is put my chipboard spine down about where I would like it just estimating where my page is going to be and then I will put it so that this is on the other page not on the actual spine and also where I still have enough room to fold this over and it's not going to affect the fold as it comes over here so from there, I am now going to use my glue where I am going to glue this down. Anytime I'm gluing a whole sheet of paper to something, I go ahead and use liquid glue. So this is my PVA glue. So I'm going to try to leave about an inch on the side there. And again, we are going to press this down so that we know it's adhered. 
and this glue actually dries pretty fast and then I have my spine piece I'm going to glue that down out of my two methods of doing this this is the fastest you'll just need more paper product so I'm gonna leave about an eighth some people like to leave up to a quarter so I just eyeball how much space I'm leaving in between my pieces and again I'm gonna go back and make sure that it's secure and now my last piece of cardstock you can see my seam here and I'm going to have plenty of room to fold that onto the front and cover it with my pages. So let me just turn it so you can see that. And then I'm going to put glue on this side as well. We're going to try to do the approximate same distance as the other one. And then again, we're going to rub that down and varnish. So now on this side, you can see I still have a lot more paper available to me but I don't want to trim it because ahead of time because I want to make sure I know where the seam is going to fall so now I'm going to go ahead and trim off where I have about a one inch border <laughs> don't have to be straight and then this is another scrap okay all right next step is we want to give some memory to this cardstock before we start bending it so I just like to take my bone folder and just go around the edges just to score it a little bit before I start bending it up so that it doesn't tear and you can go around this twice And now I just take my hands and start bending this up. And before you start bending this up, you want to make sure that that glue is dry. And I know it's dry because a little piece over here sip, seeped out. So you don't want to go messing with your pages if your glue isn't dry. And this is a pretty thick uh, chipboard as well. Okay. Now at this point, I am going to use this glue and I am going to put tape along the outside edge and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I actually was having problems with my battery. It was running low, so I needed to change out my battery. But I went ahead and put the tape along the outside edges, and now I am going to make sure that that tape is adhering. So I'm gonna do that all the way around. Okay, 
Now on this side, you can see in the corner here where the two corners meet, I am going to cut off the excess so that it is not bulky in the corners. So I am going to cut diagonally across the corners, leaving about an eighth to a quarter of an inch space from the edge of where the chipboard is. So if we're looking from this side, you can see that there is space along from the chipboard. If you cut up to the chipboard, your chipboard corner will show. So we're gonna do that all the way around, all four corners. Now, some people like to cut a little V in here so that it does not tear in this area, but I don't know if that's necessary. But what I am going to do is just go ahead and put a memory into the board, into the paper by using my boner. So I am not going to cut a V. The other previous book I showed you, the three and a half inch white spine book, I did put a V here, but I want to do one where I'm not using a V. So next we're going to go ahead and peel up the tape. And then we're going to go ahead and press this up onto the book and then again I'm going to use my bone folder to in activate the adhesive and I still got a little rip here <laughs> I still got a little tearing here from using the paper here even though I scored so just be real careful um, of your paper because paper will tear and so again we are going to release the tape paper and we are going to push this up and again use that bone folder to activate the adhesion just heat will activate the adhesion and make sure that it's together all right so now we're on the sides and before we peel up our tape those ends we just want to push those in Push that in in and do the same thing on this other side. Push that in and then when we fold this up, the chipboard sides will be covered. So we'll go ahead and peel that off. And peel this off. Again, take the bone folder, rub. I really love this end on this bone folder. And then we got to push the corners in. Push the corners in. And now we're going to peel up our tape paper. And push down and score. All right, so again, we've just pushed paper up. We already had scored this area once, so now we're gonna go back in and score this again. And the other side. And then you wanna start to pull your book up and up. And that is your spine one way. And then you also have your seam here. You can put the seam on the back or the front. And so that's where our markers, pencils and things come into place. I'll just put on here front cover 
with the my pencil and then BC for back cover that way I know that I want that seam in the back and I won't have to worry about remembering it later okay you can also mark on the inside left cover LC let me use red for that one LC for left cover and over here for right cover and that way when you're working on your book you don't have to worry about it being turned upside down all right that's one way of binding the other way of binding is a little bit more tedious you also need to have this tape and it does reduce the need to have more of those 12 by 12 sheets though and so we are now going to start with this next method so for right now I'm just going to slide these two up and we're going to bring this one in and we are actually going to take our golf tape and we're going to wrap this around three sides of this chipboard So I'm just going to start right here and we want to just put this in the middle and so then I'm just rubbing it just a little so that it can get tacky and it's sort of kind of in the middle doesn't have to be exact and then I am going to turn this board up and pull out more tape let me pull out more tape okay so now that we have this part stuck we're now going to turn this on its side, still trying to align toward the center. And then we are going to just push down a little bit to get it stuck. And then again, we are going to pull off more tape so we can do one more side. And we're going to roll this over up on the top. And right here, we want to now just clip this off use our scissors to just clip so this is what we have what we want to do is in these corners is clip in some V's so that we have less bulk in the corners we want to leave again that same 1 8 to 1 quarter of an inch of space so that we don't have the chipboard showing in the corners Okay, so we want to do that to both corners on both sides of the chipboard. So we've just did this side here. And now we want to turn it to the other side and do the exact same thing. So now we want to just make sure that everything is laid down on the edges and then we start pushing the tape down onto the sides. I'm going to flip this over, do the exact same thing here. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the opposite side, make sure that it's stuck on the side and then press my tape onto the chipboard. Turn it over, do the exact same thing. And you can see I have a little line there, but most of it will push out. And if it doesn't push out by hand, it will push out when you actually use the bone folder. So now we've got the corners here. We want to make sure we push those ends in so that we cover that chipboard on the bottom. 
So we're just pushing that in and then we're going to do the same thing. Make sure it's stuck. Push the ends in over here. And then we can go ahead and stick this down. Again, I've got some wrinkles there. I'm pushing out with my hand. When I get to my bone folder, it will push out some as well. Now on this side, I have a little bit of my chipboard showing. So I'm going to take this tape, release it, and put in just a little bit. And this is the hard part about binding with tape. To me, it's a little bit harder. It looks like I didn't get this piece here down, so let's see if I can pick it up first before I add in a little piece. So this piece wasn't pulled over enough, and so I'm pulling it over, and now I'm down. And then I'm going to use my bone folder to help press that down a little bit. So I'm going to press that in as much as I can. Then the other side. And then this side. Just want to activate the adhesive and then I can trim off any excess on the ends. So that's one side. I need to repeat this for the other cover and I'll speed this one up. Okay, we're back and we have these two pieces with the uh, tape around the outside edges. Next step is we're going to add the spine in the middle. So what I'm going to do is roll out a piece that's about four inches bigger than my chipboard. Doesn't have to be exact clip off a piece so it's just laying here and it's hard to get stuff to let go <laughs> so we'll use our pointer and all I'm going to do is lay this about halfway onto the tape push that down and now I'm going to place I forgot, I gotta cover my ends on this first. So I'm just going to take off a piece that I'm going to cut in half. It's about two and a half inches long. And we wanna cover these outside edges before we put the spine 
onto the book cover. So again, about two and a half inches midways. It's going to be covered so you don't have to worry about it. And I've got a little excess I'm just going to cut off on this end. Okay, so basically we just wanted to cover these ends of our chipboard. And now I'm just going to lay it on top of the book cover. And then I am going to sit it upright and then go down and back just to get it to stick to the actual chipboard. At this point, you want to take those extra ends that we added on. We are going to pull those up and over the top. Not too hard, but you do want to make sure that it's sturdy. And then I press that into the tape to make sure it's adhered. And then I do the same thing over here with this one. I bring this tape up. And then I use my bone folder to crease that in. And then I can also use it to make sure that the adhesion on the tape is activated. And then go over to the other side so I can do the other side as well. And there we go. So now we have this piece here. We want to add to the other side. We're going to do the exact same thing. Want to make sure we have at least 12 inches or so. And this is a little awkward because I'm doing this at an angle for taping. So please know that it is not as difficult as it looks. <laughs> and I'm going to Okay. So now we are going to put this piece on the tape about halfway, leaving at least two inches on top and bottom. Smooth that out. Rub it down so you know it's stuck. And then we're going to take this in, put it on top of our book. And then we are going to make sure that our book is straight. And then we're just going to bring that up, tap it over to grab it and back. And then we want to open that back up. We don't want this tape here to get stuck to itself. We just want it to grab the book. So once we've done that, we pull up our ends again, make sure that it's down in the groove, and pull up our ends again. And then we want to varnish both sides again, make sure that the tape is stuck down. It helps to smooth out the tape if you didn't get a good adhesion on it the first time. And now all we got to do is cover these center pieces. And so you just need to cut pieces that are just long enough to do that. Because we've got this all down there. We don't want it to come all the way down because we don't want to see our end piece when we put our paper over the top. So that's why we made these really long, so we could make these center pieces short. Again, go in there and press the tape in. And we'll flip it to the other side once I put this piece down and we'll do it on the other side as well. Press in and then grab turn it over and we just need to rub here and then press in the center again both sides again I'd like to pick which of my cover sides look the best and then I use that as my front cover 
So that's what I'm going to do right here. Front cover, left cover, right cover, and then back cover. So I like to label things, especially if I feel like my work was better on one side so that the front of the book is always the prettiest. So that is your two ways to actually bind or make your book. And next we're going to come back and we're going to do the actual, the book that we're doing only has pages on left and right cover on the inside. And then in a part at the end, I will show you how... I added pages, different ways of adding pages and making a hinge for your inside if you make a thicker book. But that's it for this video. I will see you in my next one. And thank you so much. Bye bye everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye T-Quilters. Stay blessed. Thank you.